Hey friends, I have a very special video today. I'm so excited. This has been a long time in the making, the planning. I have my friend who is Sean Town. He is the Global Director of Education and Artistry for Jane Iredell, a brand that you guys know I love. Sean is gonna be doing my makeup today and this video is gonna be packed with tips and tricks, product recommendations. You guys ask some questions, Sean answers them. So I'm super excited for you all to experience his wealth of knowledge. Say hi, Sean. Hi, everybody. <laughs> really excited to be here. I think it's gonna be a great, great fun show. Grab some notes, you're gonna learn a lot. Let's get started. So, of course, we'll start with Smooth Hair Primer. Yeah. And I'm using the Brightening Primer, which is our best-selling worldwide. Tell me, yeah, because I have the Glow and I have that one. So what's the difference between the two? The Brightening Primer is made from coconut alkanes. It will double as a moisturizer if you need it to. Oh, perfect. It has a lot of moisture in it. It has citrus extracts that brighten and minimize dark spots and discoloration. It smells good. It smells like citrus, but not too strong. Smells fresh. There's also apple pectin in it that you might be smelling, mm. and that helps to smooth the texture of the skin. And then, of course, there's key ingredients that make the makeup last longer and look smoother. This one is specifically for is to give a dewy, kind of a luminous finish, but not a shimmering luminous finish. Mm. The Smooth Affair Illuminating Glow has more of a pearlescent finish. This is really just making your skin look dewy. Hydrated. Hydrated. Yeah. Okay, so this is good for like dry skin days when I want extra moisture. Really good for that. Okay. Look up at the ceiling. This is what I'll probably use for the winter. It's my favorite in the winter. My husband has oily skin, so he, wear, he wears the Smooth Affair Mattifying. And I wear the Brightening just because I love the way that it makes my skin stay kind of moist. I'm going to get in the Hydro Pure Tinted Serum. In your color, which is the light to medium, number three, mm -hmm. two pumps of this product is sufficient for giving your skin a nice, fresh finish. Do you use this product? I love that product, yes. I was actually really surprised the first time I used it because I've tried other products similar to that, you know, mm -hmm. where it's like a serum with pigmented beads, and, and I never liked them. But when I tried this, I was, I love it. I like to wear it underneath foundation, but I also like it if I'm going to the gym or I'm running errands and I don't really want to put a lot of makeup on but I want my skin to look you know somewhat evened out I like that with a little concealer well some people don't know that this is an update for a previous product that we had called liquid minerals yes and liquid minerals was a beloved product within our line and it wasn't the easiest product to use okay liquid minerals if you put it on it would sometimes be chunky and you'd get a little grittiness and you'd have to like flick it off the skin and okay. it wasn't the easiest product. People would try to put it on and you'd have to blend and blend and blend and yet it was still mm -hmm. <laughs> one of our most popular products. People were willing to put up with that difficult application just to get the dewy finish. Oh, okay. When we took it back to the drawing board, we decided to do some interesting updates to it. We added sorbitan olivate which is an emulsifier that comes from olives. It's very hydrating, helps with humectant quality, but it also helps to smooth the texture of the product mm. so that it goes on even easier. And I actually apply this with my fingers. Oh, you do? It's yeah. It's so easy, yeah. Yeah, I put it on like a moisturizer yep. in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it gives the skin a, a radiance, but it doesn't look shiny. It's almost like a matte radiance, on me at least. I'm sure it's different on everyone, but on my skin, it it's like matte but there's some radiance to the skin yeah too which i love I, you know, I thought it was a new product i didn't know that it was a, a improved upon formula but i had a lot of viewers that had been using that product before and they told me that it was reformulated or improved i'm really excited that we're trying these different brushes i've used jane iredell brushes exclusively for the last 16 years that's how long you work with jane i, I worked for them since wow September of 2007 is when I started. Wow, that's a long oh, time. Oh, wow. This is giving a nice application. Very it feels smooth. good. Okay, I'm excited to learn about this product because I use the Pure Press Mineral Foundation. Yeah. I didn't realize you had another powder foundation. Yeah, Amazing Base is the first product that we ever created at Jane Iredale. Really? Yeah. In 1994, Jane launched this, and the way we named it is people would put it on the skin and they'd say, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So we named it Amazing Base. It has a more luminous finish than the Pure Press Base. Wow. So it definitely gives your skin a lot more glow. 
And you are a perfect satin. That's your color that I'm using on you. And I feel like the Pure Press, I don't know that I would say it has a luminous finish. I definitely wouldn't, but it definitely doesn't have a powdered matte finish either, which most powder foundations do. It has more of a, like a skin-like finish on me. So if you like the amazing base, the fact that it's not too matte, then you might like this even more. The Amazing Base has the most pigment of any of our foundations, so it's very good coverage. When this you one? On. Yeah. Okay. But it also, it, it really creates the appearance of hydration. Okay. So a lot of women in the wintertime, turn this way, will go to Amazing Base and do Pure Press Base in the summertime. Okay. Which one's your best seller? Pure Press Base, Pure Press. by far, yeah. Pure Press Base is our best-selling product worldwide. And why, why do you think that is? Well, the portability. Mm -hmm. the oh, this is loose? Yeah, this okay. is loose. Okay. A loose powder can sometimes, if you're not careful, tend to be a little more messy when you're putting it on. You'll notice that what I do is I put the brush in the powder, mm -hmm. and then I use the lid to mm -hmm. work it up into the brush, and that gives it a smoother yeah. dispersal of color. Does this have any SPF? SPF of 20. Oh, this does too. Okay. Yeah. And I go in a smooth downward direction, the same as I do with the Pure Press Base. A lot of people are like, should you buff it? And you don't want to buff it because okay. our, our minerals have luminosity built in. You don't need to buff them to make it glow. Ooh. I feel like it's pore blurring too. Yeah. Yeah. There's boron nitride, which is an optic diffusing mineral. Mm -hmm. We call it the Rolls Royce of minerals. You know me. I, use I know. I was of, like, that's a lot more than I spray. I, I typically do 10 sprays on myself. Really? Yeah. The more you wet the foundation, the more it melds it to your skin, and then it'll stay all day. Yeah, that's a really pretty color on you. Looks like your skin. It does. It really does. You said this has more coverage than the Pure Press. It has more pigment because you're applying less of it. Oh, okay. It comes out about the same. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to use a concealer that you haven't used before either, and this is called Enlighten. No. I know that you like our Enlighten Plus that comes I in the squeezable tube. Yes. Enlighten Plus has great benefits to it. This is the original Enlighten concealer. What I like about this product is that it has a much more emollient finish than the Enlighten Plus. Enlighten Plus, you think of it more like a silky, mm -hmm. moussey mm -hmm. uh, concealer. This is a true emollient concealer. It has avocado oil, sunflower oil, and moringa seed oil. Mm. So it's drenching the skin around the eyes with moisture. And then the color you'll see is very orangey. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, they'll look at this and they'll go, oh, that's going to be too dark. There you go. Yeah. But it's not too dark. It always surprises me. Yeah, my Enlighten Plus is it's deeper. It's a peach tone. Yeah. And then when I put it on, it looks so much brighter. Yeah. I really love that concealer. I feel like it's very unique. And I had to learn how to use it because at first I was applying too much. I was applying what I would have in other concealers. Yeah. And then I was like, I don't need that much because it really has excellent coverage. Well, this this also has good coverage, but because this is more emollient, mm -hmm. it definitely gives a more kind of dewy finish around the eyes as well, while the Enlightened Plus gives more of a velvet, yeah. more matte finish. How's the stain power on this? This will have a tendency to move a little bit more, mm -hmm. so the maintenance of it is important. And I always tell people, no matter what, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how expensive or good the concealer is, any concealer will crease to a degree around the eyes because mm -hmm. the skin around the eyes is constantly moving. Mm -hmm. So you smile and make expressions, little bits of product will always conglomerate into fine lines. So the solution is to remember to do your tapping. Tap, tap, tap mm -hmm. throughout the course of the day. Absorb the excess. Yep. And that just presses it back out of the fine lines and mm -hmm. smooths it out again. The other thing that's interesting about this formula is it has Amazonian Maripuama, White Lily, and Sumer Root, which are skin lightening agents that treat the darkness while it covers the darkness. Oh, no. So if you wear it on a regular basis, it really helps to fade out some of the darkness and discoloration. Okay. People also like it for hyperpigmentation okay. because it's really good for fading that as and well. And what color am I? You're Enlighten 1. Enlighten so one, there's okay. just one Enlighten 1, and then there's an Enlighten 2 that's a darker, more intense peach that people use for severe hyperpigmentation, birthmarks, things like that. Oh, okay, so there's only two colors. Yeah, only two colors in this mm -hmm. formula. That feels good. Yeah. Nice and hydrated? Yeah, I feel very hydrated. I'm going to go into our fun concealer, the new one that we recently launched, Pure Match. Mm -hmm. This formula has been getting lots of attention. People love how easy it is mm -hmm. to apply. Do you use this brush? Uh -huh. Yeah, this is one of our new ones. 
God, it's gorgeous. So it looks like there's the dense bristles and then there's little small, like little, individual bristles that come out above it. Yes, the fibers are extended at the tip of it. You can use the tip of the brush to really shear out or blend out any edges. And then if you use the side of it and pat it down, you'll build more coverage. That's so cool. I want to use this brush to go in and put my individual stripes of light in the areas that I want. Like there on the mm -hmm. top of the cheekbone, here on the top of the cheekbone. Oh wow, so this is giving a very sheer application. And then I'm gonna go in with my brush that has the Hydropure Tinted Serum and the primer on it. I typically do this when I'm using this brush or when I'm using this concealer, I'll go back in with a, a slightly moist brush. Mm -hmm. To help and, spread it. And, and tap it in, but mm -hmm. this I feel like it, it kind of does the whole thing all for me. I don't even have to worry about it. And so you went to the product to your hand and then... Yeah, I put it on the side of my hand. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that, as a makeup artist, I typically don't ever touch the mm. wand to anybody's face if I'm using a tester. Yeah. That would be unsanitary. So by working on the side of my hand, mm -hmm. I get a secondary surface that I can kind of spread the product out with and control it more. I find that I over apply sometimes when I use you know, the product to the face. What I'll do for cream blushes is I'll take the brush to the product versus mm -hmm. taking the you know product to the face because especially because I have foundation on, bronzer, other products, and I don't want to disrupt that makeup underneath. Well, that's one of the reasons I started following you is because I like the fact that you do realistic makeup. No, oh, thank you. If you're putting it on, I don't ever see you gobbing it on the face. You're very meticulous in how you do your applications yeah. on yourself. So. I always say I wear a lot of makeup, but I wear a lot of little bitty layers. Take a look at that, and you can see where I place mm -hmm. the highlights mm -hmm. on the tops of the cheeks. Oh yeah, super natural Down the too. center of the nose, on the chin, mm -hmm. in those areas. And then I'll get the deeper color. I'm gonna use 10 in. Okay. which is a slightly deeper color than your skin. Mm -hmm. Do the same kind of application, but this time I'm using... This is my favorite. This is the 112. The 112. I love this brush. Under your cheekbones, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of lay it along the underside of the cheekbone, laying it on the underside of the cheekbone and just blending it in, sculpting mm -hmm. your face in with it. I'll also take some up in the temple. Mm -hmm. I like it right there in the temple. And this shade's nice because it's warm, but it's not too, it's a good tone for me. Yeah. So Lexi asks, I struggle with under eye and laugh line creasing, no matter what primer or concealer. Any tips? So that's back to the, mm -hmm. remember to do your tap and tap, 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 mm -hmm. tap, tap, tap. No matter how expensive or good the concealer is, the solution is not to add more concealer or to mm -hmm. powder over the concealer. The solution is not to, mm -hmm. you know, use a different brand. It's just to remember to do your maintenance. In the same way that you would touch up your lip gloss, mm -hmm. you're going to tap out your concealer. Mm -hmm. It's a way that we maintain our face. Using a damp beauty sponge after just to like press in there and absorb any excess product is a good tip that's a, too. That's a great idea. I do that on my foundation too sometimes. I use our Flux sponge from Jane mm -hmm. Ardell and I'll go and just press and roll mm -hmm. the skin around the eyes with that. And I feel like I get some nice extra absorption and dispersal with it. I will do one other bit of product around the eyes. I'm going to get the amazing base in ivory, which is the lightest color we make. And this is a little fun thing that I love to do when I want to make the under eye look really fresh. And I'll just go in and lay it under there and disperse it out. And that makes it look really like kind of airbrushed. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have another question about color correcting. Do you have any tips for applying a color corrector and a concealer together so that it don't, doesn't look too heavy? Well, using a more orange concealer mm -hmm. will neutralize the gray-black circles. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think you go lighter with the concealer to compensate for the darkness, and that doesn't work. Light over dark, then it turns even more gray, right, more yeah. ashy. Some people just prefer a lighter under eye. They want a brighter. Go in with a peach concealer and then something lighter, like even what you're doing now. Yeah to get that brightness. For the longest time, makeup artists would use lipstick up under their eyes mm -hmm. to kind of create that appearance of brightness. Mm -hmm. or to, to neutralize the darkness, and then they would go back over it with a lighter concealer. Some of those lipsticks that people were using up under, under their eyes can have a tendency to be more comedogenic because mm -hmm. they were meant more for the lips than they were for the mm -hmm. skin on the eyes. Not and that skin long. is so delicate and thin and, oh yeah, very pretty. Very fresh. Mm -hmm. How does your skin feel? Does it feel like you're wearing anything? Like it feels very light, even to the touch. It doesn't feel, uh, it feels hydrated, but it doesn't feel tacky. Good, good. Yeah. Do you usually we use an eye primer? I do. I usually do an eye primer. So I'll go in with your skin match color, which is your 8 in. And I'm just going to thin it out very thin with my fingers. 
and I'll apply it to the lid. And you like to use your finger to apply? I do. And I like to use my finger too because I just feel like you get a really nice thin layer. Yeah, if you put too much eye primer, it really defeats the purpose of what you're trying to achieve with the eye primer. Because mm -hmm. if the eye primer is so thick that it's creasing up, mm -hmm. that's what you're trying not to do with your shadows. So mm -hmm. what I like to do is I like to blend the eye primer or whatever product I put on the lid. I like to blend it until it's completely dry. Mm -hmm. So if it feels slippery, mm -hmm. then I keep blending until it until there's a little bit more of a friction. Right, otherwise your shadow may stick. All right, so we've got a beautiful complexion. We can now go in with, with color. The Pure Bronze Bronzer in light may very well be my favorite bronzer I've ever used in my entire yeah, makeup career. Yeah, it's really good. I usually like cream bronzers, but this is the one powder bronzer that I love. It just has very consistent payoff. It's very smooth, it's very easy to blend, and that color is just like the perfect warmth for the Exactly. Skin. Not too orange, but not too cool either. It's just perfect. So I'll go up into the temples with it. Oh, this is working nicely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is really beautiful. And the cool thing is when I put it over the deeper pure match color, mm -hmm. There's an incremental area of depth that's underneath the bronzer that looks really pretty together. So that's nice. I'll also go under the jawline. And of course, right on the front of the neck where we have a tendency to get very white because the sun doesn't hit us there. I'm gonna use our, our new holiday palette on you today. I'm excited about this. Every year we do some kind of a holiday kit. This one this year has two matte shadows to shimmer shadows, a really intense guava colored blush called Passion, and then a pearl powder called Elegance. Now, many years ago, we launched a pearl powder. It was in a sifter, and you actually carved the product out. Everybody loved it, but it was just a, a seasonal thing, so we didn't mm -hmm. keep it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have been asking us to bring this back, so we did. I'll use this brush. I'm a little nervous me... about this. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, but I'm excited. Well, I trust you. What I can do is I can go and put the excess on mm. the back of my hand, mm -hmm. and then I'll come in, and I'm, I'm, I'm starting up in your temple, like I mentioned, I think the last time we played together, higher placed blush mm -hmm, yes. in the temples and the high part of the cheekbone is what's on trend. We're not you. seeing it in the apple anymore. I know, and that makes me sad. I, you liked it in the I apple? I always love a lot of, uh, I like to see my blush, and, you know, I like to see it and when I look straight in the mirror. Well, you've got good apple. apples too, so <laughs> I can see that. I like it high up because it, it definitely gives the face a nice kind of a sultry intensity. So is that your kind of default placement on all faces or do you does it differ depending on a face shape or? If somebody has a really long face, then I might go mm. more just for the apple alone. Mm -hmm. And then as it blends, it's blending. So it's going highlight, blush, bronze. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go back over the top of it with something that makes it even more fiery, which is our 24 karat gold. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, another product that we launched specifically for holiday. Every holiday we do something typically that has a little 24 karat gold in it. This is a product that we used to carry in our regular assortment. And this is face, eyes, anything? Face, eyes, lips. There's a lot of makeup artists that love to mix it with their lipstick. Mm. Take a look in the mirror and you'll be able to see how it captures Ooh, the light yes. when you turn a certain direction. And it's very soft. Very soft. Yes, it's very, very soft. That's so pretty. I love how everything just like blends together. I mean, you can see lightness and darkness and this pretty blush color, but you can't really see where, where one stops and starts. Yeah. It's just very infused, very pretty. The other way that you can add shimmer and sparkle to the top of the cheekbone is, of course, with our quad bronzers. Mm -hmm. So Moon Glow is a popular product that, that has gold and bronzy shimmer tones. The other way that I like to get this to be highlighting is I'll get the lightest colors from the top of that and pull those along the top of the cheekbone. And this gives a more kind of obvious shimmer. Mm -hmm. so. That's pretty, yeah. Okay, so I've got a question for you. I get this one asked a lot. What are best tips for like someone with a lot of texture to the skin? Whether it's fine lines, wrinkles, or pores, or scarring. If it's around the eyes, I don't go shimmery with the eyeshadows. Okay. Shimmer can have a tendency to bring out the texture of the eyes and make them look more crepey. Mm -hmm. If they have a lot of texture in their skin, mm -hmm. then I definitely would not have used the Moon Glow or the 24 Karat Gold. Okay. I would have kept the blush and the bronzer more matte. Okay. And then spritzed it with hydration spray to kind of keep it more mm -hmm. dewy. Still. Yeah. yeah, and hydrated. And, and by the way, I'm, I'm going to do that anyway just because 
when we apply the cheek color, I like to go back in and just ensure that it's going to meld to the skin mm -hmm. and all blend together. I will say this was a product when I first met you, you were trying to sell me and I was like, I have setting sprays, I don't need it. <laughs> and you're like, trust me, you need this. And I'm glad I did because it takes it from like a 10 to like a 14. These are wonderful because they, they're they not a setting spray. Yeah. The term setting spray sometimes concerns me because there's some setting sprays out there that have polymers in it like as if you're spraying hairspray on your mm -hmm. face. But this is distillation. That's mm -hmm. the process that makes the setting of the makeup possible. There's no minerals in this. When we distill it, it removes all the impurities in the minerals, and then we infuse it with the, for this one, pure pomegranate, which is a powerful antioxidant. Mm -hmm. But when you spritz it, mineral makeup with this that has no minerals in it, it goes and mm -hmm. sucks into the makeup and fuses it to your skin. So let's go back to the holiday palette. And now I'm gonna use some of our eyeshadows. Now I've already primed your eye. I'm gonna get the first color in there, which is called Kindness, and I'm gonna use a fluffy brush like this. This is the N14, and I'm gonna take this color all over your entire eye, from the lashes to the brows as a base shadow color. But I love using a medium shade all over the eye rather than a light shade all over the eye as an eyeshadow base. Why is that? Because I know a lot of people that'll put like a white or an off-white or like a light color all over their eyelid to base their shadow. And then if you notice, you can't get the intensity that you want because mm -hmm. that light color absorbs all the dark color that you're trying to put on top of it. So by using mm -hmm. a slightly deeper color, not only does it make the eye look more deep set, mm -hmm. but now mm -hmm. I have a color that I can go lighter than or darker than mm -hmm. to create the intensity that I want. I'm usually someone that does lighter. That's a good tip. I'm going to... I loved the way you did my makeup last time. It just looked kind of like my skin looks. Like it, it just looked like you couldn't really tell where color started and stopped. Everything just blended perfectly. Yeah. Now I'm going to get the same color and I'm, I'm going to get this time the 209, mm -hmm. which I think is a gorgeous mm -hmm. brush. Thank you. And I'm going to take it along the lower lash line, just blending it back and forth. So I'm surrounding your eye with this soft, warm color. Do you usually do this, like the same shade that you do on the lid? Not okay. always. Sometimes I'll go darker or a different shade, but for this, I really want your eye color, which is, you know, that beautiful green. I want it to be floating in an ocean of warmth. Oh, I love that. So when you completely surround the eye with a color, it does things to your eye color. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go into it with a slightly smaller brush this time using the N13 which again is a gorgeous crease brush and I'm going to get the next deeper color Curiosity and the Curiosity I'm just going to put on the outer eye and again I'm not really focused on the crease I'm not searching for your crease mm -hmm. I'm putting it from the middle of the eye out blending away any lines of demarcation and I'm pulling it up towards your temple in an upward and outward direction from the corner of your eye deepening the whole outer eye mm, with it. It's pretty. So Sean, tell me about your role at Jean Ardell. Like, because you travel a lot, you work with your retail partners. When I started with the job in 2007, they hired me as a national educator. That was my position. And I was so excited to have the job because I already loved Jane Iredell. I was introduced to the product in 2003 and I had fallen in love with the brand. I was so excited to work for Jane Iredell. So I took it. Mm. And then, I'll never forget, I'd been with the company about a year, and Bob Montgomery, Jane's husband, came up to me at one of our national sales meetings and said, how would you like to go to Vietnam? <laughs> <laughs> and I was so nervous, and I said, absolutely, I'll go. Mm -hmm. And that was when I started traveling globally for Jane Iredale, and that was in 2000, I think, end of 2008, beginning mm -hmm. of 2009. And then they promoted me to global educator, and I did that for the next uh, 14 years, and then in 2022, they promoted me to Global Director of Education. Mm. I can't get over how my skin looks. Yeah. Like, this does not look like a powder foundation to me. Mm -hmm. It looks so, so good. It's a lovely glow. Mm -hmm. The deeper color that's in there, I'm going to use the N12, and I'm going to get the purple. And with this purple, it has a good amount of shimmer to it, but I definitely want to tap it off well, as it's a bit more intense of a color, and I'm just going to put it in the corner of the eye only just on the lash line in the corner. I'm not even going up into the crease with it. If you had to pick three products 
that you feel like you put on every client, what would they be? Smooth the Fair Primer, probably Hydro Pure Tinted Serum, mm -hmm. and Pure Press Base. The skincare makeup system is there's something magical that happens when you combine our Smooth Affair Primer, Pure Press Base, and Hydration Spray. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the other thing is that I put on everybody is Hydration Spray. Mm -hmm. I don't do a makeup without spritzing. And I don't just do it because it sets the makeup and gives it longevity. I do it because it changes the finish. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a good question. How to make cream products work over powder foundations? Well, that works quite easily at Jane Iredell because we don't use talc and we don't use mineral oil. Mm -hmm. So the big challenge that people have putting creams over powders is when you put when you try to put a mineral based oil like a mineral oil or petroleum based cream over a talc based powder it breaks it up oh yeah. that's that, that's a recipe for concrete right there. it just <laughs> creates all kinds of nastiness but because our minerals really immerse very well into the essential oils that we're using like avocado oil moringa seed oil things like that it doesn't get gummy or cakey. Mm -hmm. You just push it in and it disperses in mm -hmm. or yeah. absorbs. So the trick to that is using the right ingredients, mm -hmm. using a formula that doesn't have talc or mineral oil. Now, there's a placement that I'm going to do that might be a little different from what you're used to. I'm going to get the last color over here. It's called Courage. Mm -hmm. And that color I'm going to apply on the inner corner of your eye right next to your nose. Do you know Jennifer Lopez? She always has that sultryness like happening right there. Oh, yeah. This, it's not, it's not a new thing by any means. We used to do this back in the 80s and 90s. Yes, I'm thinking of like 80s makeup. But what I love about it is it does two things. Number one, it gives the inner brow area a lot of structure, mm -hmm. makes it look nice and intense. It also gives structure to the inner edge of the nose mm -hmm. there. I don't usually contour my nose daily, but like for photo shoots I will, and I like to kind of blend what you just did down through like a soft nose contour. Yeah, that's really gorgeous on you. Now let's talk about what kind of eyeliner you normally do. Well, I usually, I'll either use a cold pencil or I'll use, I love your mystical eyes. But as far as placement, I usually try and start in the center of my lash line and extend out. I try to avoid putting it in the inner corner, to keep that area light and bright. Do you ever tight line? I love the look of tight line, and I do. I don't do it every day just because I have dry eyes. Optometrist told me not to do that every day. Well, our, our liners, what I love about them is that they're made with conditioning waxes and oils. Mm -hmm. So it, this won't dry out your eyes in any way okay. whatsoever. I do think that tight lining, when I'm having my best makeup day, I'm tight lining. Yeah. You know, <laughs> when I have a photo shoot, I'm tight lining. I love, I love a good tight line. I also always used to love to line that lower lash line inner rim with something bright like a pale, pale yellow or a pale, pale peach in there. Oh, yeah. And I love that look too. So I'm going to lift up your eye and I'm just going to go right under the edge here, taking about three quarters of the way in. The other reason I love this is because when it touches on the bottom, you get an even more kind of deep, sultry look. Mm -hmm. You know what product I recently fell in love with is the mascara. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. The thing about our mascaras that a lot of people don't know is that one of the things that differentiates it is that we're not using lacquer, shellac, or petroleum. Those ingredients, unfortunately, are horrible for the lashes. Mm. The dirty secret that nobody really talks about in the cosmetics industry is that traditional mascaras are loaded with lacquer, shellac, and petroleum, and what they do is they break the lashes. Really? Yeah, well, is that what they're on the ingredient list? Is, are they named that, or is they do a bunch you'll of see, names? Sometimes you'll see petrolatum, mm -hmm. or you'll see um, petroleum. I don't know what the chemical name for the lacquer and shellac is, but if it's waterproof, that's a good indication. You probably don't want to use it okay. for daily. When you put it on, what it does is it hardens. Mm -hmm. Your lashes get crunchy, mm -hmm. and then when you try to take it off at night, it, can break it breaks your lashes mm -hmm. off. I'm just going to take a little bit of a extension here in the corner and then blend it into that outer edge. So you just did a tiny bit on the upper lash line. Upper lash line. Uh, just the outer corner. The and majority of the liner is on the inner rim of the eye, mm -hmm. not the upper or not, or not the outer. But putting it right there does a good job of kind of tying it together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. It yeah. extends the outer edge of the eye. With the pearl powder what I'll do is I'll go in here both above and below the lashes. I like putting a light shadow like that in the inner corner, but even more like what you're doing, you're not keeping it concentrated to a small space. You're kind of like blowing it out. 
Yeah. Kind of making the eyes wider. It's one one of the reasons I love mm -hmm. pearl or teardrop shaped brushes like this is because they create areas of mm -hmm. color rather than lines of color. Mm -hmm. You can put a little up in the highest point of the arch of your brow as well. And the other placement that I think is lovely for the pearl powder, just kind of as a as a finisher for the complexion, is mm. just dusting it right down the center of the face. The ash blonde pencil, and I'm just going to fill them in a little bit. Now, you guys have two brow pencils, right? Yes. Like a thicker one, and then this one's a little more of a precision tip. Yeah, the precision is when you really want kind of a more sharp shape to your brows. Mm -hmm. The shaving pencil is when you want to fill things in a bit more. Okay, so this is kind of maybe when you want to create more of a shape. And both of them are good for, you know, creating, defining, or giving definition, but this one, because the lead is so small, you can create very small lines. I love that it has a spoolie at the end that you can use to blend the product together. Mm -hmm. This is called Beyond Lash. Beyond Lash, yes. Yeah. Uh, the Pure Lash is our most natural-looking formula, oh, kind no, of the I most like, basic. I don't like natural, I want drama. This is the most kind of dark, inky, intense, and I use it with a business card as my That's trick for putting it on just because it keeps me from getting it all over the eyelid. The Lash Primer has panthenol, sea algae, um, hydrolyzed wheat protein, which feeds the keratin of the lashes, mm -hmm. so it's a great formula. The Beyond Lash, you can wear it without a primer, because it's a it's the most kind of dramatic, intense and dramatic. But mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like it gives a lot of volume and length. Coordinating colors for eye look to lips to blush. How do you make sure it flows? What are your thoughts on that? I think there's the only rule is there's no rules. Yeah. I don't think that your makeup has to go with your clothes. I don't mm -hmm. think that your your eyeshadows and your blush and your lipstick all have to be the same, same undertone. Tone. Yeah, I agree I think, with you. I love doing a warm, warm, like golden eye mm -hmm. and then a cool purple pink lip. Mm -hmm. Or doing a gray, cool eyeshadows and then an orange Something lip. Warm. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I yeah. love that contrast and I drama agree. on the eye. I mean, I think that there is definitely color theory and things that will help you understand how to approach makeup mm -hmm. best for you, but I don't think there's necessarily rules. If it makes you feel good, you should yeah. wear it. Yeah, the only rule, I always say the only rule is there's no rules. So the lip color that I'm gonna put on you mm -hmm. is called Poppy, and this is on our new- I love this formula. It's, it's so gorgeous, nice. isn't it? It is nice because it's it's packed with pigment, but you can still like get a softer look from it. I feel like if I want a lot of pigment, two or three layers is perfect, but even just one layer is going to give me a, a good, nice level of pigment, but still be soft and diffused. That well, makes sense. this is intense pigment, mm -hmm. this, this one. This color, yeah. And the other thing that people like about this formula is that there's a stain under the pigment. Mm. So you put the color on, initially you get the pop of color. And then when it wears off, there's a stain that kind of stays behind. So you get you get good longevity with this. Oh my goodness, this looks gorgeous on you. What a beautiful color for your lips. And this is a nice look going into holiday as well. Mm -hmm. I love a good orangey red. I also love the liquid lipsticks you guys make. Oh yeah, the Beyond Matte Lip Stains. Mm -hmm. They're a very popular product with us. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, striking. I do, I do love a good orangey red on me. I never wear it, but when I do, I'm like, oh, I love it. I love it. You look fierce. <laughs> it's different for me too, but I, I just love the eyes. I just can't get over how seamless it looks. It's so beautiful. It's soft, but it's also sultry. Yeah. You know? It's like evening, but it's not heavy. Intense, smoky, without it's so being... so pretty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. I, I, what I don't like is I'm seeing a lot of people that draw the crease in and they don't mm -hmm. blend it enough and you see the lines of demarcation. I don't like lines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I yeah. like colors to blend one into the next. It looks very diffused. Everything looks just like, just beautiful. Like a work of art. It looks like a work of art. Like mm -hmm. it, you can tell that like I got my makeup done, you know? I love it. <laughs> well, that wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you took away some tips and tricks. If you did, let us know in the comment section below. Sean, I love the way my makeup looks. 
But you look gorgeous. I feel gorgeous. And, and it doesn't feel like you're wearing anything, right? It doesn't. It really doesn't. I feel glamorous. Paul and I actually have dinner tonight. It's his birthday. Oh, yeah, lots so, of fun. Yeah, we're going to go have sushi. So I'm all done and ready. Thank you for being on my channel. It's an absolute joy. Mm -hmm. And, um, and and you know, I'm enjoying following you. And I thank you for following me. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun uh, interacting with you on social me media. Me too. And speaking of that, tell everyone where they can find you on Instagram. Oh, I'm the neck up. <laughs> the neck up. That's, that's, that's my Instagram handle is the neck up. So. Awesome. Well, thank you, Sean. Thank you. Bye.